Hey, all my recluse role players. So today we're going to be changing things up a little bit. We are going to be looking at RPG glory stories. Now, before we get into the stories, I really quickly want to say thank you all so much for we hit 500 subscribers the other day. It truly blows me away, and I really do appreciate all of you who enjoy the videos and those that subscribe. So today we're only going to be looking at two stories. The first is a viewer submitted story. It's a great example where throwing out the rules can lead to some great fun. It's a blast. From Crescendo 77. Our party consisted of me, the DM, and five other players. A Celestial Warlock, a Champion Fighter, an Eldritch Knight Fighter, a Whispers Bard, and a Drunken Master Monk. When the story started, it was the old reliable, you meet in a tavern and the monk went berserk. He said, This is where I belong! And we all had a pretty good laugh. So he looked around the tavern to find the biggest guy, which happened to be a barbarian Goliath. The monk goes up to him and asks if he wanted to do a drinking contest. They agree, and I had them roll a d20 to see who will drink a pitcher of the strongest ale they have. The Goliath rolls a 4, and the monk rolled a nat 20. I said that he shotgunned the entire pitcher before the Goliath was even able to take a sip. The monk realized pretty quickly that it was pure moonshine that he had shotgunned. We made a joke about his bloodstream being replaced with an alcohol stream, and the monk starts roleplaying drunk off his butt. The campaign I had was about a vampire king trying to take over the material plane, so vampires were very prominent. The first dungeon comes along, an abandoned warehouse that had a secret basement that just seemed to be going down forever. When the party enters a small offhand room, a vampire casts a darkness spell in the center of the room to try and ambush the party. The vampire tried to bite the monk. Out of character, the monk jumped up and asked if the vampire could make a constitution save because his blood was just moonshine from the memeing earlier on. We laugh, and I say sure. Vampire rolled a nat 1. Everyone is losing their minds, and I say the vampire dies from the immediate assault that his liver just encountered. A drunken master monk just inadvertently killed a vampire that tried to bite him by alcohol poisoning. He says that it was his favorite experience that he's ever had in three years. Our final story for today. It's a long one, and it actually has a little bit of crossover with RPG horror stories. But either way, it is still a glory story. This is posted by Mr. Mad Maniac. The edgelord who blackballed the villain before the DM could do the same to us. For a while, I had wanted to get into D&D, but didn't know exactly where to start. At the time, I wasn't very internet savvy and didn't know a lot of people that played it. Eventually, however, I found a game store with a DM that hosted sessions and seemed to recently be open. I brought my friend Drew along and we rolled up our characters with a couple of other new guys. Our hopes were high, as the DM proclaimed himself to be a master story crafter, with COUNTLESS AWE-INSPIRING CHARACTERS AND ARCS. I rolled up a tiefling bard named Prudence, who I intended to play as a sort of con artist with a heart of gold. Drew rolled up a half-elf paladin named Alun Enoch, and other players were a gnome sorceress, a halfling cleric, and a half-orc monk. Me, Drew, and the other players quickly got along and the session started with us meeting in a tavern. At the time, I wasn't quite aware of how cliche this was, but whatever. Maybe the DM wanted us to have a simple, straightforward, bright adventure, since we were new to D&D. This turned out not to be the case. Instead, our adventure consisted of trudging through a grimdark, semi-noir-styled story, where we had to deal with things like mob wars, murdered NPCs, and a lot of sex and racism. I don't even think we even got to leave the city. We weren't exactly comfortable with this setting, but figured that was just sort of the price of admission. DM is our dungeon master, and that means he's our... Master? I guessed, and kind of just went along with things, hoping they would get better. They did not. Our first real quest dealt with a crew of goblin smugglers that we'd tracked down to an old shipyard. We charged into their hideout, and immediately all went down, in two rounds, as the goblins all cast Lightning Bolt. The only reason it took a second turn is because Monk stopped himself from charging through the door, right after a loon went down. 
Enter Kane, an NPC rogue paladin wizard something to save us. Single-handedly killing all the goblins with ease, casting Spare the Dying on us, and blowing up the ship we were to target, which was loaded with all the contraband. The DM described all of this in extensive detail for over five minutes, while we just lay there, barely alive, unable to do anything. I'm pretty sure he also described the parts our characters weren't even there to see. The session wrapped up with Kane berating the party for such carelessness in the PURSUIT OF JUSTICE, and we escaped back to our base at the end. We only got half of the payment because some mysterious figure who delivered the head of the goblin captain and collected the bounty. After that session, I asked DM if that encounter was even balanced for us, and he seemed to take offense to this because he went into a long lecture about the goblins and how they seemed to exploit a bunch of homebrew and metagame factors that made them all insanely powerful, but there's still just that challenge rating. I was a little annoyed, but took it in stride. Okay, I figured. Maybe we're supposed to take a more stealthy, tactical approach. And this super guy is just meant to represent how powerful we're to become in the end. Or maybe he's supposed to act like a simple safety net. If only I had realized sooner. We met again, and this time we tried to stealth our way around the hideout of a bunch of thieves after a heist to catch them unawares. DM abruptly tells us to roll for initiative. We apparently all just got caught with no chance or save. Immediately, we're beaten down by a bunch of thieves that were just as broken as his goblins. And again, Kane came in to save the day. The DM gave a very lengthy, detailed, and enthusiastic description of him tearing apart the thieves, saving us, and talking down to us like we are dumb children. Monk weakly asked who he was and he just continued to monologue about essentially how cool he was, and how foolish we were, etc. Not giving any detail as to who he was, or why he was saving us. Instead, just going on about how BEAUTIFUL AND WRETCHED this city was, and how much of a LONE CRUSADER he was, and blah blah. In addition, Kane seemed to curse like a sailor, with his favorite word being GOSH DAMN! Basically, imagine the Punisher mixed with Batman, written by Frank Miller, especially modern Miller. Yet again, we were sent back to the base to only pick up half the reward, and a penalty to our experience. This went on repeatedly. While in the city, many NPCs told us legends of this mysterious vigilante, Kane, whom all the criminal underworld feared, and how he once punched out the Demogorgon or something. For so many NPCs we had to work with, they seemed to all fit so few archetypes. The grizzled old man, the sultry bad girl, and the streetwise punk kid, all of which were snarky and insulting to the party the whole way through. It wasn't very long into this campaign where I tried to work with the DM to make these encounters easier. We weren't having fun, getting stomped so quickly, and then having his NPC bail us out every time. He countered, basically by going into how awesome he was though, and how tragic his backstory supposedly was, and how we were all supposed to be so enthralled by his righteous crusader. I asked if we could leave the city, and he dismissed it, saying we'd be hunted down and murdered by a cabal of demons. I just asked for some fights that we could win without help, and that would be all we would need. DM said he understood, and would fix things for us. Next session, we were killing rats in a sewer. Not dire rats, just regular rats, that seemed unnaturally hostile, partially due to our target, a mad druid. After dealing with the rats, the druid revealed himself wild shaped into a giant spider boar thing, and wiped the floor with us. King came, saved us, did his thing, and left. At this point, some of the other players were getting actively frustrated and complained about nothing having changed. DM complained back that he gave us that free encounter that was little more than us stomping on rats. That should have been enough! No, it was not. And the monks player argued that we came here to have an adventure with satisfying combat and story. And so far, we'd just been acting as the audience for his DMPC's solo story. Every time we got close to the boss, we'd get stomped, and Kane would take the spotlight. Every mystery that went on for too long, we'd arrive with Kane having already gotten there first and taken care of everything. Why are we even here? Because you should want to do good things as heroes. And what have we managed to do? You fought crime and witchcraft. We have, and lost, every single time. 
Then you basically take the story for yourself and act like we're not even here. I didn't come here to hear about the adventure you wrote up for yourself. I came here to play an adventure. After this argument, we took a hiatus of a couple months. When we came back together, Monk's player was unable to join us due to a new job he had to work. So we got another new player to join us instead. They rolled up a half-drow rogue named Droog. First impressions weren't the best. Alright, introduce your character in the tavern. He sits quietly in a dark corner, looking into a piece of paper. He doesn't say anything upon seeing you. DM's eyes visibly narrowed, and a sour expression was visible on his face. Fan flooping fantastic! We now have an edgelord party member in the campaign that is nothing but edge. Can't wait to see how he reacts upon being out edged by an uber cool Akan. I almost said Kanye. Kane. <laughs> One of the few things that kept his campaign going was the RP between us. Cleric and Sorceress were a charming pair that formed an adorable little romance as the two players gradually started to date each other. Monk and Drew played as phenomenal rivals, always trying to outdo each other while still working together. Me and Drew were like a typical buddy cop duo, with me being the wacky trickster and him being the honorable warrior that still got his jokes. In fact, Drew played a loon great, himself able to balance a thirst for vengeance, being an oath of vengeance paladin and righteousness without being so preachy or inflexible with the group, and displayed great depth with it. And now we have an edgelord, whose character barely responds beyond, He looks at you with apathy, but understanding and gives you a nod. He glances your way before sternly shaking his head, or maybe saying a sentence of about five words or less. However, remarkably, he seemed to play alright, not murdering any guards, creeping on NPCs, nor stealing anything we didn't need. He just didn't roleplay much, so it seemed. I felt a little bored with him, but tolerated him. Shortly into our session with the new guy, we find the dead, mutilated body of the half-orc monk hung from a tree, with a message directed at us. We were on the case. Now it was personal, and a loon filled in Droog as to what was going on. We followed the trail to the hideout of the boss, a goliath wizard that was the right hand to the big bad evil guy, who had stolen a rare set of silver pearls that had magical properties. What's more, he was the one that killed the monk and even raped a major character from Aloon's backstory, as he had told Droog. He even shared a picture DM made. We rolled initiative, and immediately four of us were caught by a hold person spell. I gave a frustrated look at the DM, who looked excited for something special coming. He began to monologue through the wizard to us about how Aloon was so weak and helpless while he raped his sister. However, Droog was still active and ran at him with his dagger. He cast heat metal on the rogue! What? But he's already casting whole person on us. He's a war caster and can cast another spell while maintaining the concentration for it, he said with a satisfied expression. Droog failed his constitution save, and thus had to drop his dagger, after taking the damage, while still running at him, sliding between his legs. Your hand is badly burned and hot to the touch. What do you do before he crushes you? Droog's player stared down at the map, then to his character sheet, then to the wizard's pick, his eyes darting between them with a worried expression on his face, but also hinting at an idea in his head. At this point, I wasn't paying much attention, because I was expecting Kane to save us again and steal the show like always. I... I grab his balls. Ha! Make a dexterity check. Nineteen. Heh! Well, alright. You've got a hold of him. Now all you've got is your pitiful bonus action. Tell me, what do you do- I squeeze his testicles as hard as I can. I use a strength check, right? What? What? The room was silent for a solid minute. DM thought Droog was grabbing for the stolen pearls, but now he instead had his hands around jewels even more precious to the wizard. The DM started to flip through his notes and the book frantically, trying to find a loophole. The wizard wasn't wearing armor, just a kilt secured by his belt, but there was no such thing. This wasn't for damage. This wasn't for theft. This was simply going to hurt. Um, make a strength check. And there we received a miracle from on high, but from D&D gods themselves. Natural 20. The DM was horrified and scrambled to counter. I, I, he rolls a constitution save. Natural 1. There truly are D&D gods. 
The DM curtly states that the wizard has lost concentration on all of the spells. Next turn, Aloon charges head-on, rolling to attack as we all moved in to fight with everything we had. I kicked the hot dagger to his spellbook. The sorceress used Mage Hand to place the hot metal over the book. The cleric drove it straight through the book with his warhammer. Droog was not letting go, no matter what, while Aloon plunged his sword into the wizard's face. In two rounds, Aloon had inflicted the finishing blow, and his sister and friend had been avenged. DM's face was bright red as he watched us defeat his boss. Droog finally decided to roleplay a bit even. He finally let go, got back up to his feet, wiping his hand off on the wizard's kilt and dusting off his hat. It's done, but how it was done never leaves this room. We all started laughing at what just happened, all except for DM. We only stopped when he started screaming at us. You ruined my scene! You ruined everything! You were supposed to be beaten and saved by Kane! He was his big bad evil guy! Hey, he was mine too! Yeah, and this time, we actually got to beat him. DM went into a long rant about how Kane was supposed to kill him because the wizard had murdered his family and sold him into slavery when he was a baby. We all just started laughing harder. The campaign ended after that, and DM never wanted to play with us ever again, but that moment will be one I will always cherish as my first glorious victory in D&D. In the follow-up, we became friends with Droog's player and invited him to play with Monk's player as well. And just as it so happened, he would become a DM himself. TLDR? DM wanted us to be a captive audience for his edgy OC's edgy adventures, until a would-be edgelord beat him to it, busting the big bad evil guy OC's and the DM's balls all in one squeeze. If that is not a glory story, I don't know what is. The fact that the edgelord turned out to be a good player, for one, and the party as a whole worked together to overcome what I would say is an over-controlling DM, mmm. It is good spice. Terry Crews could burst through that wall right now, I'd be pretty happy. And this is the perfect example of a DM who just needs to go and write a book. Take your sad Batman and make your own story. I am impressed with the players who kept returning. I couldn't imagine being able to only do two rounds of combat and then being told, Nope, you're done. Kanye West is here to save the day. <laughs> Have you ever been in a story where the edgelord redeemed themselves? If so, I want to hear your story down in the comments below. If you want to hear more stories just like this, hit the subscribe button. If you want to hear more stories from me, there is a channel that I am collaborating with a bunch of other content creators, and we have come out with quarantine stories. It's more along the lines of creepypastas. I'll be loaning my voice over to them about one or two times a week. Their link will be in the description below. Until next time, hope you feel inspired.